All right, fellas, get excited for the first non-episode of Brunch Marks, where we're going to be taking a look and comparing performance between Elementary 5.0 and 5.1. Let's check it out. So while this guy's installing in the background, I want to tell you all about NordPass. NordPass is a password and secrets management tool. It's created by the folks behind NordVPN, so you know it's got to be good. As with most password managers, it generates and stores and autofills your password, but also saves and autofills other secret things like credit cards, so you don't have to bust out the physical credit card every time you want to buy something online. Now, one big thing that NordPass has going for it compared to its competitors is that it's very modern and lightweight. It wasn't created five or ten years ago with old web technologies, and it isn't super JavaScript heavy, bogging down your browser. It's super lean and fast, and it doesn't get in your way like other password managers out there. NordPass also follows a zero-knowledge architecture, which basically means that your secrets are encrypted on your device before being backed up in the cloud. This means that literally nobody can access your secrets but you, since you're the only one with the encryption keys. I put an affiliate link in the comments and description if you want to check NordPass out for yourself. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is look at the system under test. We're comparing elementary 5.0 to 5.1 here, and looking at NeoFetch, we can see a few upgrades, mainly in the kernel, from 4.15 to 5.0, along with Ubuntu's hardware enablement stack. The number of packages increased slightly from 1623 to 1730, which also comes at a slightly larger install size. The bash version got a tiny bump from 4.419 to 4.420. Next we'll take a look at resource usage directly after install. Curiously, elementary 5.1 is about 200 megabytes heavier at idle than 5.0. There's also a slight increase in idle tasks from 97 on 5.0 to just over 100 on 5.1. The increase in memory usage appears to come from Gala, which is the window manager. I didn't bother checking the tasks because the increase is negligible. Next up, we'll go ahead and install the software needed to perform our tests, namely Steam and the latest NVIDIA drivers available, which were installed right out of the box on Elementary 5.1. How cool is that? Now this part isn't terribly exciting. If you want to see a more in-depth look at Elementary OS, check out Episode 3 of Season 1 of Distro Delves. The NVIDIA driver that was pre-installed was version 435.21, and since this video is about comparing the performance between the two Linux distros like out of the box, the driver version doesn't really matter much, so we're sticking with what's pre-installed. Now for this comparison, we're going to be focusing on gaming performance between the two distros. It would be cool to look at performance holistically, but at this point in time, there's not very many reliable or easy to use benchmarking tools, so the PC game benchmarks are going to have to work. Now I really like the GTA 5 benchmark because it tests the gaming performance through a compatibility layer, Wine, or Proton, or Steam Player, or whatever you want to call it. Wine should add a little bit of overhead, which is good for the benchmark. I'm running it in DirectX 10 mode here, which means we should be using Vulkan. Now even though the in-game benchmark reports over 25 frames a second, when you're in the city playing the game, the frame rate is far lower than that. Anecdotally, I can say that Elementary 5.1 was significantly smoother, despite both distros clocking the same FPS in the built-in benchmark. Next up, we have CSGO, which is a native Linux game using Valve's Source Engine. CSGO was a strange one. Elementary 5.1 stuttered, like, super bad for the first few minutes, like, bad enough that I considered it unplayable. 5.0 was smooth as butter. Both benchmarks clocked in at the same 50 frames a second, it didn't stutter during the benchmark, so this might be map-related? But that obviously doesn't explain why it only happened on 5.1. Now I don't think I've ever used Mad Max in a benchmark before, which is a shame because I have the game configured to use Vulkan here, so it's like a legit Vulkan benchmark. Mad Max ran flawlessly on both distros, both of them clocking in at about 28 frames a second, so this is more or less a good test to see if Vulkan is configured and working properly. Now I tossed Zenotic into the mix because it is a criminally underrated free and open source game that is ridiculously fun. And curiously, it also appears to be single threaded which makes this a rather unique game to benchmark. Both elementary versions clocked at about 170 frames a second, elementary 5.1 being slightly higher than the two but it's a negligible difference. And the last game on the list is Uni Engine Valley which ran poorly on both systems. There's not really much to say here other than there were no real differences, the frame rate was bad on both. It's an interesting benchmark, but it doesn't really tell us anything that we don't already know. And the last benchmark we're going to look at is good old Geekbench 5. This is where things get really interesting though. 
On the single core side of things, there were a couple possibly significant regressions with 5.1, noticeably in text compression, in body physics, and ray tracing. On the multi-core side of things, 5.1 won in almost all of the tests. Now I'm wondering, and you guys can correct me in the comments, if some of these regressions are due to the CPU mitigations, though they should be enabled on other versions of the kernel too, right? Perhaps you guys can shed some light on the situation as to why kernel 4.4 gave us slightly better single core performance over 5.0. And wow, this video was a lot of work to make. It went through several revisions before settling on the format that you're seeing now, and I really hope that you guys enjoy it. And if you did, or if you didn't, Give me some feedback in the comments so I can improve. And before I wrap this up, I want to give a big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring the video. I'm not going to rehash what I already said at the beginning, but if you're in the market for a secrets manager, I can't recommend NordPass enough. I switched to NordPass prior to making this video so that I can ensure that it was great quality before I promoted it for you guys. They've got a few different plans to choose from, and if you use my affiliate link, it directly supports the channel. And of course, they've got a money back guarantee so that if you do sign up and you don't love it, you can cancel, and get your money back, no strings attached. Thanks again for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check me out on Twitter or Coffee or Patreon if you're interested. And as always, thanks for watching.